Hello, and welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review. Uh, I'm Dr. Hassel. I'm uh, coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, courtesy of uh, the Digital Pathology Association and PATH presenter. Uh, our case today comes from the uh, uh, realm of GI pathology. It's a 25-year-old man who has uh, acquired HIV infection um, and has uh, begun to experience some dysphagia. Uh, and so as a consequence of that, uh, he uh, gets an upper endoscopy. Uh, the endoscopist uh, describes these uh, slightly uh, vesicular, almost ulcerated lesions uh, in several portions of the uh, mid and distal esophagus. Uh, you can see them here. Um, and uh, raises a concern for areas of ulceration and infection. So uh, thinking about uh, this kind of gross presentation of an ulcer ulcerated or exudative esophageal lesion, uh, the first things that come to mind, particularly in an immunocompromised patient, uh, would be infection due to uh, Canada, although that's usually a little bit more exudative and more white. Uh, herpes would be number two on our list. Um, but it should be remembered that reflux esophagitis can also produce uh, ulcerations, although usually not uh, in the mid-esophagus and not to the degree that we see in that uh, endoscopic uh, picture. Of course, other infectious disorders can go along with this, CMV infection, various other uh, types of um, uh, infections, uh, compromises to uh, Mallory Weiss tears and so forth. Uh, and we shouldn't forget that Crohn's disease can also occasionally present in the esophagus uh, with uh, ulcerated, inflamed lesions, fissures, and so forth. Of course, any patient who's had radiation, uh, either uh, for neoadjuvant treatment or for other reasons, might also uh, encounter uh, some esophageal ulceration and uh, uh, changes that uh, we see in these endoscopic findings. So usually a biopsy will be performed, and as we can see here, we have uh, several fragments of uh, squamous mucosa. Uh, we can see that there's maybe some uh, hypercellularity here, some uh, ulcer ex exudate down here. So we'll go and take a look and see what we've got here. Uh, looks like we've got some mixed inflammation here, uh, eosinophils, some uh, polys, and uh, some maybe some plasma cells. Certainly some reactive larger type uh, endothelial cells here may be infectious. Uh, we don't really see any direct uh, uh, CMV type uh, uh, inclusions in this uh, particular field. Uh, we'll look a little further here um, and we can see that uh, here we've got uh, normal stratified squamous mucosa. We don't see uh, too much in the way of active eosinophilia here in the uh, Mucosa, maybe a few polys up in here, but there's a so there's a little bit of uh, reactivity here. Certainly, we have intercellular edema and spongiosis uh, type changes. Um, when we're thinking about herpes, we want to be looking quite closely at the basal epithelium, particularly near the edges uh, of things, because that's where oftentimes we can find uh, diagnostic inclusions. Uh, so, looking and evaluating here to see. Uh, do we have anything that looks like uh, uh, herpetic inclusions? Um, and then, uh, of course, as you can see, we're coming into a field of uh, great interest here. Uh, this mixture of uh, uh, keratinocytes and inflammatory debris that would be encountered with an exudate uh, is a prime area to look for inclusions. Uh, and as we uh, look here, we can see a couple of uh, features that are very helpful. First of all, we see these ground glass uh, changes to some of the nuclei uh, with a peripheral rim of uh, enhancement. Uh, maybe here's a little bit of a multinucleate cell. Here's another cell with this sort of an inclusion, another one here. Uh, these are the Cowdery A bodies uh, that are fairly typical for herpes uh, infection. Uh, here we can see more of these here um, in probably these cells as well. So with a nice uh, array of uh, uh, classic uh, inclusions, uh, multinucleate cells here, and the inflammatory debris, uh, we could be pretty confident that this is going to be due to uh, herpes uh, infection in this uh, location. Uh, what we may also uh, want to think about, though, is uh, 
uh, the possibility of something else uh, being involved here. And so looking to see, do we have CMV? Do we have uh, features to suggest uh, candidiasis uh, or other associated infection is always prudent uh, in these uh, samples. Um, let's uh, take a pause and think about herpes simplex esophagitis. It certainly is most commonly seen in immunocompromised patients, such as those with HIV. But it can occur in immunocompetent patients, uh, particularly in children. Um, however, usually the mode of transmission is uh, sexual transmission, uh, so there's some sort of uh, concomitant oral uh, uh, herpes infection um, or uh, other uh, problems, um, and it's frequently associated with secondary infections like Canada. Um, CMV is also a common uh, concomitant uh, passenger with H uh, sim herpes simplex. Usually these uh, present initially with vesicles that rapidly progress to ulcerations, and these may coalesce to form uh, larger erosions. Uh, the finding of multinucleate cells, the ground glass nuclear inclusions, so-called Caudry A bodies, uh, very supportive of the diagnosis. But if you're in doubt, uh, immunohistochemistry is quite reliable in detecting these, and uh, PCR is also available to confirm the diagnosis. And as I've mentioned already, always uh, rule out other co-infections. Don't just stop at the first uh, bug you find, especially in these immunocompromised uh, patients. So let's take a look at a couple of uh, additional uh, samples um, with uh, this uh, uh, presentation. Here's a section of squamous mucosa here. Um, we can see uh, fairly normal looking areas here. This is practice in searching and finding the inclusions. Uh, the places we want to be looking are areas like this where it begins to get a little bit uh, uh, reactive or atypical here. Um, let's see if we've got anything up in here. Uh, maybe something right there. Well, I avoided the uh, green dots, but maybe we'll better go back to the green dots uh, to uh, find the positive green dot sign. Um, here we are. Uh, in this sample, and here we can see maybe between here a couple of cells like here, uh, multinucleate cells with a little bit of ground glass inclusion. Uh, so this is maybe not the strongest case, uh, but certainly a very subtle case and uh, highlights the importance of searching uh, the entire uh, sample. Uh, to see if you can find these sorts of uh, elements. Now, another uh, feature that uh, we will want to evaluate, of course, is the edges of ulcers. Um, so this uh, case is another example that uh, allows us to uh, go after that and to consider uh, the question of co-infection. So here's an area that's ulcerated. We have lost a lot of the squamous epithelium. We see this uh, reactive um, granulation tissue type stuff here. And many times these cells will look very much like they have uh, nuclear inclusions, either maybe due to CMV or, or, or herpes. Um, and so in a case like this, uh, this is where immunohistochemistry can be quite helpful uh, because as you can see, these cells are quite, they're atypical, but they're not quite diagnostic of, uh, of herpes. We're not seeing the uh, classic inclusions. Here, of course, they've embedded it on gel foam, and that's why we've got this uh, matrix around it here. Uh, so looking a little bit further in this case, um, just to illustrate the kinds of areas you want to scour, uh, these are these basal areas, especially where you're starting to get towards an area of ulceration and erosion, such as right here. Um, and you can begin to see maybe a few cells here beginning to suggest uh, possible nuclear inclusions, but maybe not quite diagnostic. Here's another area of granulation tissue. It's a little bit of an island of uh, squamous epithelium remaining here and some neutrophilic inflammation. So this again would be an area of uh, prime search for uh, classic uh, granule um, um, inclusions. Uh, again, I'm not seeing them here. Um, and of course, then searching areas like this, we can see 
well, here's a very big nu uh, nucleus with a nice big cherry red nucleolus or maybe a nuclear inclusion uh, that may suggest that you've got concomitant CMV going on here. So in a case like this, uh, not easily identified, this is when um, the uh, use of immunohistochemistry or other testing methods uh, can help to uh, uh, identify those uh, more subtle findings. Here's a little bit of some atypia here, again, suggestive. Uh, but in our experience, uh, usually immunohistochemistry will show uh, evidence of infection before you've got uh, good, solid, uh, morphologic, classic inclusions and in multinucleate cells. So it certainly helps to uh, both confirm the diagnosis and to help to rule out subtly um, infected cases where maybe you've lost the inclusions, the diagnostic features due to ulceration uh, or other changes. Uh, so these two cases with very subtle uh, findings or absent uh, classic inclusions, uh, I've included deliberately to uh, remind you of that spectrum. So our final sign-out diagnosis today is herpes simplex esophagitis. Uh, sometimes a very challenging diagnosis to make, but helpful to get uh, special studies. And of course, always uh, rule out concomitant infection with some other entity. Well, that's our, our case for today. If you've enjoyed this, uh, please comment below on uh, what you, you find useful in uh, detecting these lesions, uh, whether you prefer immunohistochemistry or use uh, PCR or other methods. Uh, and of course, we invite you to subscribe so you won't miss future offerings. And please uh, share this uh, with your colleagues, friends uh, on social media or other uh, manners uh, so that they can uh, learn from our experiences as well. So until next time, thank you very much for joining us.